I found out something very unsettling about Harry. He gambles. What do you mean he gambles? He plays craps in the back room of a private club. I mean, you know, you will let him. Come on, little Joe. Uh, snake eyes. Hard way. But so it goes. He loses a lot of money. You had no idea? No, I didn't. Welcome to the Crap Vegas Podcast. Vegas, here we come. Vegas! Here are your hosts, Chris and Josh. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode number 36 of the Crap Vegas Podcast. I am Chris. He is Josh. It only took us about 25 minutes to get going today. Because Josh's microphone wasn't working, I blamed him. Except, and it out, <laughs> wasn't actually him; it was me. Uh, but we're uh, we're here. We're ready to go. I switched computers. I was fiddling with every sound setting I could find. Chris is like, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. No, nope, I got, out took a couple it phone was Chris. calls, played with the cats, <laughs> and uh, I was like, hold on, let me try one thing. And here we are. But uh, Josh, how are things going out there? Everything going well? Things are going really well. I'm finally over being a little sick and looking forward to our next trip. And, you know, just getting ready. School started around here. Have you guys started yet? Oh, yeah. We started a, a week or two ago. So, yeah, they've been back for a while. Already done all like the parent walkthrough meetings and all that stuff. Ooh, all that stuff. We have that coming up. And Yeah, it's it's been great. So we're getting into our usual fall routine here. So oh, here mellow. All the, all the vacations are over. Well, that's actually not true. But most of the vacations are over. <laughs> I was going to say, it feels like you take a vacation like once a week. Every going week to, you're somewhere. I'm new. going to Kansas City in a week or two, and then we got our Vegas trip, all sorts of stuff. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So let's tell people how to get a hold of us. Uh, you can reach us via email. That's podcast at crapvegas.com. You can reach us on our Facebook page. That's crapvegas.com slash Facebook. You can reach us on voicemail. That's crapvegas.com slash voicemail if you want to leave us a message there. Or finally, the easiest way is always going to be on Twitter. Or threads in parentheses. <laughs> um, that's uh, at Vegas Duffy. I'm at Small Whale 13, or the show page is at Crap Vegas. And no, Josh, I am not calling that X. Okay, so previous episode feedback. We received a comment from Neil on the CV Facebook page. Neil said, Love the show. Something fun. I'm seeing more and more bar top electronic craps games. For those times you want to get comp drinks at the bar and still play a little, saw it at Tuscany just off the strip. And Josh, yeah, we, I mean, we talked recently about our trips to video poker bars before shows right. and stuff. And if there was a craps video, you know, equivalent at that time, I would have loved to play it. I was just thinking that too. I mean, throw a hundred bucks in the little bar top video craps machine. That would be awesome. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I think bubble craps is like my like weakness where like, I don't want to talk about <laughs> it. I don't really play it that often, but I do love walking up to a bubble craps machine and playing on a hundred bucks or something. Yeah, and just to sit at a bar and get comp drinks. I mean, you'd have to know, like we, our experience with video poker, I think different bars and properties are going to comp at different levels and all that kind of stuff. But if you knew you could just sit there and play, you know, $5 craps or something and get comp drinks for a while, I'd sure do that. Well, here's the the benefit to the casino if they did it. I'm not going to just play $5. I can guarantee that. I'm at least going to have... <laughs> Chris is playing 270 20, across 20. on the on the bar. <laughs> <laughs> on the bar. Can I get a marker right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that would be fun. Yes. But that that would fit my personality. So they would make a lot more money if they offered this compared to just a simple video poker machine. I can picture you going in the high high limit slot room, getting a getting a Tito ticket for, you know, three grand or something, taking it to <laughs> the bar top craps. I'm, I'm going to play some bar top craps at the bar. Come on. <laughs> Where you get uh, no tier credits, probably. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, forget that point. But yeah, that's probably true. Um, so yeah, good information, Neil. If I saw that, I would definitely take advantage of it. I haven't noticed it anywhere on the strip that I've sat down. But then again, I don't sit at a lot of video poker bars. Yeah. If anybody knows if it's if it's creeping up around places other than, than Tuscany, uh, give us a shout because I'm I'm curious and I, you know, I'd love to sit and play it and have a little pink drink and one of my favorites pink drink. Yeah. <laughs> Just give me a purple <laughs> alcohol today. That's what I'm going give me, for. Give, give me an umbrella. Okay, so we also got a comment from you typed out Jorkan or but is it Jordan? <laughs> is it Jordan? Jorkan. Jorkan. <laughs> the mag the magnificent. Might, is this Jordan? You you had a little typo there? This is one of our I think we have two patrons named Jordan, but yes, this is supposed to be Jordan, not Jorkan. Okay, so thank you, Jorkan. Uh, Jorkan says, thanks for the recommendation on Absinthe. 
We ended up sitting front row and I was the very first guy he picked on. It was hilarious. In my opinion, it's the best show I've seen in Vegas. Has a little bit of everything if you can handle some vulgar comedy. And yes, I mean, we try to push as many people as we can to Absinthe because it truly is the best show in Vegas in my eyes. Yeah, and no, we're not getting a cut or anything like that. We genuinely really liked it. And as long as you know exactly what Jorkan said about the vulgarity piece, it's fantastic. Now, if they want to offer us a cut to promote it, I'm more than willing to take it. So <laughs> yes. please reach out, podcast at crapvegas.com. But uh, Josh, that's a Caesars thing. We're not big Caesars players, so no, I don't know but it is, that we get there. It is an awesome show. And I'm glad, Jorkan, that you liked it. And I'm glad our advice, you know, or our recommendation was proved, proved out. Yeah, perfect. Uh, we also received a comment from Blair on the CV Facebook group. Uh, Blair said, I'm back at Planet Hollywood this weekend, and I confirm Caesars does enter your odds bets into their rating application. I've heard this before, but thought the pit boss was mistaken. They have a ratings app that specifies what you're betting and how much. I always thought that they just put down an average bet for each player in total. What Caesars does is they enter your average bet for each section, pass lining, place bets, odds, hard ways. Then this calculates the theoretical. The pit boss suggested I was getting comped on my odds bets, but I'm pretty sure there's no edge, there's no comp. But it still makes me wonder why they would even enter the odds bet into their system if I'm not getting comped off of it. And Josh, I know we've talked about this before because I've mentioned how they do this at my local Caesars property. Right. And yes, they put it in bet by bet. On the four, you're betting, you know, on the outside, you're betting this. The inside, you're betting this. They take all that down. And I'm not arguing that they don't take that information. I agree. Right. They do. I'm just saying you're not getting anything off those odds they're putting in the computer. And half the time, floors, when they comment on that sort of thing, they have no idea what they're talking about. Yeah, and maybe if, I mean, I'm wondering if they give you a rating, you know, if they say you're rated, your average bet is 500, is that taking into account those odds, which are then not factored in your Theo? I mean, it could be totally misleading. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that could be really confusing. But uh, what you know, Josh, we learned last episode from your trip that uh, Caesars gives everybody a numerical value as a number. And yeah. I still want to know more about that. So if anybody yeah, we has have information to- on that... Please let me know. I'm very curious too. I should have I should have pressed a little more, but you know, I was trying to get something out of the host, so I didn't want to be too pushy. But no, as far as rating the odds, or at least tracking the odds, I know as you said, I know some properties do it, Blair. They're they're putting in all your different bets. And some are just factoring it. I think that the MGM properties, as far as I know, just take a just take a total figure, not counting the odds. Is that what you understand too, Chris? Yeah. I mean, I think that they take the information down because it never hurts to have, but at the same time, I don't think you're getting any value out of it. Right. But it's okay. good to know, and it, it's worth... Oh, sorry, Chris. I was just going to say it's good to know, and Caesars may do things a little differently. We know they do in some areas, so maybe they're rating differently, but I have a hard time believing you're getting much for the odds, for sure. Yeah, and if you were, then I think everybody would start switching over to be pass line with odds and come betters. Because as uh, Jack says, that's the best bet. I mean, well, I mean, you got comp chasers, Josh, and that's important to a lot of people, and point chasers, all that stuff, and... I mean, I know that's uh, not us, but at the same it, time... It's not? I, th- I feel like it is sometimes. <laughs> I mean, in some ways it is, but I actually don't enjoy cum betting. I don't think no, it's... No, no. So, I mean, like, even if it was fully rated, I still wouldn't be a cum better because I just don't like that style of playing. I know mathematically it's in your advantage over placing or buying, but right. at the same time, I just don't enjoy it. Yeah, I mean, I've talked about it before. I used to do the three-point molly a lot, and... I don't dislike it as much as you, but once you get into the world of playing across or playing more numbers, it's definitely more fun <laughs> for good or bad. You know, one thing I was thinking about recently, Josh, and I haven't even mentioned this to you, I would consider on a really hot roll after we were like 20, 25 rolls in and numbers are really getting pressed up. Are you going to regress? Consider, no, I wouldn't regress, but I would consider starting to put up come bets to take those place bets down. Because then at least, you know, in that final seven out, you're getting a little bit back for the combat. And I would even go a little heavier on the base combat, you know, and maybe lower the odds a little bit just for that protection when it finally comes. It's not a bad idea. We may have to give that a shot. I mean, how many times do we get up to 25 or 30 rolls and this really matters? <laughs> I mean, you know, maybe once or twice a weekend. You're but. using the wrong set, Chris. That's what it is. I need to work on my set a little bit more. Okay, so let's transition into uh, the only thing I really wanted to specifically talk about this episode, Josh, before we get to a lot of listener questions that we have. Why is Vegas a destination for gamblers? And I'm not saying this like, why do people go to Vegas to, you know, because there's shows and there's good food and all that stuff. I'm saying specifically, if all you're going to really be doing is gambling, which is what you and I do a lot of trips, 
And what a lot right. of people I know do as well, they just go to Vegas to gamble. They don't leave their property they're staying at. And then they get in a cab and they head back to the airport and fly home. Why do gamblers do this in Vegas versus doing this in, say, a regional property or a local property? Why don't they go to AC or go to Biloxi or just go to their local Caesars place down the road if that's all they're going to do and the shows and food don't matter? So I thought we'd talk about that a little. So you're saying shows and food and easy access to weed and all that stuff you're not thinking of as a... How many times have we taken a trip and gone to Vegas, landed in McCarran, got a ride to the casino gone down to the tables, played, got a little food here or there, never left the property, and then got back in the you know car and went back to the airport right. and never felt fresh air, you know, other than getting out of the cab for a second. <laughs> I think, Chris, at least I'm going to just talk more for me than for kind of what I think might apply to a lot of people because, you know, we're different. I'm thinking, for me, I'm sure if I went up to play at the Tulalip Casino, which is a, which is a tribal casino near me that has a resort, you know, that you can stay in a buffet and all that stuff. Why don't I do that instead of Vegas? I think it's the, it's part of it's just the allure of Vegas. Even Mm -hmm. though you're talking about not having, you know, kind of discounting those other things. I think the idea that if I want one of those other things, I could do it. Part of, part of the allure of Vegas for me is not necessarily right that I might not leave the property. I might not have anything other than win room service if I'm at win. But the idea that if I wanted to go to a show, or if I wanted to go have really nice drinks, if I wanted to, you know, go to some club or something like that, those are options available to me. Okay. But a lot of those things you can do in some place like Atlantic City or a Biloxi. And if you're like, if, if you're me and you're an East Coaster, right. it's a hell of a lot easier to get to Atlantic City or a Biloxi. Yeah, you have a long haul. to get to Vegas. I mean, so why wouldn't I? But, you know, at the same time, though, but I never consider going to those places over Vegas. And if you're not there, I'm not typically going to see a show. I'm not walking around to a bunch of different properties. I'm right. at, you know, where say I'm at win that trip. I'm at win. I'm at the craps table 80% of the day. The other 20% I'm in my room, resting, eating in my room, whatever it is. I could have that same experience of gambling and sitting in a hotel room anywhere. And quite frankly, I could probably get better gaming action at a local property. I can get 10 or 20 times odds. You sure. Know, maybe I can get more bang for my buck from that perspective. There's no travel cost, you know, getting to those places or less travel cost. Maybe they'll do more for you in a place like that. I don't know. I'm, I'm just trying to figure out what it is in my mind that is saying, go to Vegas when there are much better options for what <laughs> I do typically on a trip. I'm thinking, yeah, as we're talking about it, I'm thinking of a couple things that kind of set it apart for me. One is it's a destination, is an escape. So when you're okay. trying to get away from just the daily grind of life or reality or anything like that. It is, a, it is an escape. I think it, it, Vegas still is a place that you can run off to. You can kind of, you know, escape reality and the daily grind. I think that's part of it. I think the other part of it for me, and I've touched on this before, is I don't want to get into the habit of playing locally. That Vegas is a forcing function of, you know, I have to fly two and a half hours or two hours and all this kind of stuff. So I can't play every week. So I think that's part of it is that it's a it's a safety a safety valve or a safety factor for me. Those are a couple of things. What do you think? I mean, I think you're right on those things, but I think I think mostly it's just a mental thing. Like people think yeah. Vegas is where I go to gamble, so I'm going to keep going to Vegas even though I know I can do it closer and for cheaper and get the same sort of, you know, actual gambling experience, but there's just something about being in the city that makes it so much more enjoyable. And we'll talk about it a little bit more at the end. Uh, but I'm going to take a trip this weekend that I wasn't really planning on taking. And I'm going to stay at Wynn again, even though I haven't been there in what felt like six years. It's been three months. But that's a long time when you used to go to Wynn all the time. <laughs> but I'm going there not so much because Wynn's doing something amazing to draw me in. They're not. They're actually doing the opposite of that. But at the same time, I miss the feeling of playing there. I miss the dealers. I miss the camaraderie. I miss the small things like the Tower Suites Bar, getting the coffee and stuff. Yeah. I yeah, miss yeah. all those things. It's not like I have a, a relationship with these people. Like if they never saw me again and I never saw them, my life wouldn't be affected at all. They wouldn't miss a beat. I wouldn't miss a beat. It would be okay. But I, I just want to get back out there and see them and have those interactions and do it again. So maybe it doesn't matter, you know, what the gambling rules are, what the location truly is. It's just the connections that we can make with some of these peoples and places. I think that's definitely it, Chris. I think a lot of it is, you know, the the people and also kind of on the flip side, people that play regularly at local joints, and I'm talking about local, not outside of Vegas, but I mean, not in Vegas, but people that play locally in our regional casinos, 
oftentimes it's not as much fun. You know, the thing about Vegas also is people are there usually for vacation and to party and to gamble party, whatever it is. And that's a different vibe than if you're playing at your local joint. No, that's 100% true. When I go to the local place, I see the same four or five people that are there 24-7. Right. They're not that friendly. I, I just, I usually don't enjoy myself. And that's why, honestly, I haven't gone to my local place in a while and probably won't go for a while. Just because it's not the same experience. I've, I've found that I'd rather just take the flight and get myself out to Vegas for a weekend, even if it's for one night. Like, I'd rather right. fly to Vegas midday Friday and take a flight out at 1030 Saturday morning after I got a long Friday session in, got up early, played all morning. I enjoy that far more than going to my local place, even if I played there for a couple days. And, you know, I really don't lose that much of my weekend to do it. So, yes, it's not as cost effective to do that. It's expensive to fly out to Vegas. But my thought is always the same, that when you get everything else for free, you know, when you're eating for free, when you're staying for free, they're giving you tons of free play to come out there to do it. It offsets the cost of the flight pretty quickly. Yeah. And the other thing I was thinking about, I know this doesn't apply to a lot of our listeners probably, but I think there's a fair number it, it does. I mean, Joyce might be a good example of someone that popped into my head. I think part of the reason is the the ability to to do, you know, to have a very luxurious vacation. I can't get that if I go to my travel property. Can't hit the level of room that Wynn has or that Sky, Sky Suites has or can't get that level of service, that level of luxury. You know, today, Josh, just out of curiosity, I put a poll on my Twitter page asking people, what do you get the most out of? Do you get more in offers and comps from your local property or Vegas properties? And about right. four out of four out of five people said that Vegas gave them more than their local property does, which makes sense. And I think that this is something worth echoing because I hear this a lot. And I think somebody even responded to the poll about this. People have expectations that where they play the most is where they should get the most from. That is not always directly correlated. If anything, sometimes it can be the inverse of that because local properties already know that you're hooked, you're going to be there, you're going to come. Right. Yep. They don't have to give you much to get you there. They may give you $100 in free play where Vegas may give you $700 in free play because they right. know it's a hassle to get there. You probably have to take a flight. So they're typically going to offer you a lot more. So the poll response makes sense that you get more from Vegas. But at the same time, you shouldn't have high expectations for your local property to give you a ton because you're probably going to come one way or the other. Yep. I think that's absolutely right. You're just, you're, they're not going to, they don't have to woo you the same way that Vegas does. No, exactly. So just keep that in mind when you're thinking about offers. But then again, that also means Josh, 20% of people are getting more from their local property and still choosing to come to Vegas. Yeah. Well, I mean, and I think we kind of cabin this discussion to just if you're, you know, not into all the other things that Vegas has, but when you put in all those other things, Oh, there's it's a no-brainer at that point. Yeah, I, I mean, if you want to see a show and you want to have top-notch five-star dining and stay in a luxurious resort, well, of course you come to Vegas. It's by right. far the best place to do it. But if you're just a gambler and that's all you really want to do for a day is gamble and eat a couple meals, then that becomes a harder proposition. But I still understand why we do what we do. Me too. So I think a lot of you probably feel the same way. I mean, you could go somewhere else just as easily or probably more easily than you could go to Vegas, but we still we still do it. Yeah, exactly. And that's why we're here. For sure. Okay. We got a bunch of listener questions to get through this week, so let's kick them off and get going on these things. First, we got an email from Mike. Mike said, hey guys, thanks for all that you do. I never was big into podcasts and heard about yours from a friend, and now I'm hooked. Thank you also for the You Can Bet on That referral. Love their show as well. No more radio for me. Question. He, uh, he goes on to say, I haven't listened all the way back to episode one, so I apologize if this is a repeat but can you talk about how important a host actually is? I get good offers from MGM and Caesars for their properties with free rooms, food and beverage credit, and free play. So I'm not sure what else the host could do that I'm not already getting. If it matters, 75% of my play is at MGM properties, and I would say my average bet on the tables is around $150 to $200. Thanks for all that you do, Mike. Yeah, that's a really good question, Mike. Thanks for asking. I, we have talked about hosts, but I don't think we mind talking about hosts at all. Uh, again and again, it, there are experiences with hosts and our opinion on hosts is ever changing. And mm -hmm. I would say that there definitely is value in, uh, in having a host or there definitely can be value in having a host. A host can give you, well, first of all, a host can make you feel special. Just the idea of having a host and that you're a hosted player 
you know, you feel you feel like you're something special. So that's a little bit of it. Hosts can also give you more free play or food and beverage or things above your corporate offer if they choose to. So there's value there. They can set up transportation for you if it's not part of your corporate offer or give you, you know, a nicer suite or, you know, you've heard some of the experiences that we've had, you know, the cake from my wife on her birthday when we went to Vegas, Mm -hmm. all those kind of things. But there's a downside, which we'll talk about in a sec. What do you think, Chris? Yeah, I think that at a baseline, a host should always be able to get you what you're getting from corporate. So there's no theoretical downside to using them in that area. And they should be able to do a lot more. And they can be very creative things that, you know, you just never see. They're, they may have ability to get you into some sort of event that's going on that's not open to the public that they happen to know about and have a couple extra seats for. Like Josh got to go to, what, the Country Music Awards? Academy of Country Music, I think it was. Yeah, the ACMs. Something, I mean, pretty much the same thing. And oh, yeah, it's not, definitely the same thing. And keep in mind, these can be last minute things. Josh had no idea he was going to that when we got to Vegas. It was just no. literally, we were standing on the casino floor playing. The host came up and said, hey... I got a couple extra seats. This is something you're interested in doing if you want to stick around. And Josh is like, sure. Um, So, you know, small things like that that you don't expect are amazing. And of course, if your corporate offer gives you $100 in free play and the host gives you $500 in free play, well, I mean, that's a big deal. And the same thing with transportation. That transportation has cost. So if they can throw that in just by you asking, well, terrific. You should take advantage of those things. But yes, there's always a downside to, you know, everything that's positive in life. And Josh, what what are your negatives about going through a host? Well, a couple things. On the very kind of minor level, sometimes you just want the ability, or at least me, I want the ability to go into the app or whatever it is and just book my room, book my offer and be done with it. Knowing that that's, uh, I've just done it. It's done. I'm good to go. I know that next Friday I'm going to Vegas, whatever it is. And that, and this is the room I'm going to get, you know, there's that kind of instant gratification that you might not get with the host, but that's a minor thing. I think the bigger downside for me is once you have this relationship, it's really easy to feel um, beholden to that host, you know, that you don't want to let that host down if you don't want to, if you don't play at the level that they expect, or you want to keep getting treated the way you're getting treated, you know, that you have to play to that level to continue to get that gift basket or that transportation or that suite. So there's a there's a little bit of a of a hook there, you know, a, it's a bit of a drug. What do you think, Chris? Yeah, it's a mental hurdle you have to get over. And I think that some people are better than others at, you yes. know, you know, pushing that limit to the extreme. And I even Josh, I give Josh credit because he's taken a couple trips recently through hosts that were effectively zero gambling trips and he let them know in advance and they still booked it and he's still around today, you know, working with the same person <laughs> right. for the most part. Uh, right. So no, I mean, you you can push the boundaries occasionally of what's acceptable, but at the same time, yeah, you're right. There there comes this like mental thing where you know, hey, they're doing this, this, and this for me. I need to give them play in return to make it worthwhile. And I'll go a step further and say the one thing I found is now I'm getting so much from one of my hosts specifically right. that those expectations keep growing and growing <laughs> every day. I expect the next triple, what is he going to do to outdo what he did last time? You know, and I want it to be better and better. I want a better room and I want more free play and I want more because I feel like I'm giving him more play so I should get more in return. When at the same time, I really didn't deserve what he gave me at the beginning. It's well above my corporate offer and it could all dry up tomorrow. And if that happens, then I'll be extremely disappointed. Well, I mean, specifically, let's talk about our situation at at MGM. So we you know, our host is giving us now Sky Suites pretty regularly. And when our corporate offers don't sometimes have them, or at least are more limited on dates and things like that, I found myself thinking, what if I dropped my gambling level? You know, if I, my bankroll was low, you know, and all of a sudden my host said, I can't give you a Sky Suite. I can give you a Corner Suite, which are still wonderful. But how would I feel about that? You know, am I sure. so spoiled now that it's like, you know, I need to gamble. I feel the need to gamble at the, the level that they're going to continue to give me these, these things. They, and they're well aware, the casinos are well aware that this is going <laughs> yes, on in our, yes. in our mindset. <laughs> they know this drill. No, for sure. And, you know, Josh, feeding right into that, I think since we've come in contact with some of these hosts that have helped us a lot more, I do find myself playing heavier, you know, more now than I yeah. did six months ago, a year ago, two years right. ago. And I, the rise in my betting really doesn't correspond exactly with like a rise in income. 
Like it's all affordable and it's still, it's still <laughs> right. within the same budget that I set before. I haven't increased my gambling budget for the You're year. You're not in trouble. Like that. No, well, I mean, you know, we've talked about, it. we, I, I set a gambling budget for the year. If I hit it, then I'm done for the year. Thank God that hasn't come up this year. But right. uh, no, I do find myself each time I'm going, pushing the boundaries more, getting a higher average bet where, you know, maybe it went from 270 to then all of a sudden playing 500 on the evens and then. Maybe now sometimes it's 700 across <laughs> so or whatever good. it is. And next thing you know, you've tripled your betting in the course of a year. So, of course, you're going to have a lot more you know, fluctuation in your bank right. accounts when you're doing that. But, you know, why am I doing that? Well, maybe it's, some of it's in my mind thinking, okay, well, what will I get if I do this? And that's not right. exactly the best way to be. I think we always tell people, you know, don't chase comps. Don't play just to get that sort of thing. But at the same time, you know, I've, it's just it's natural when you're dealing with a host that's doing so much. You want to keep pushing the envelope to see, you know, hey, maybe I could What's get a next? Sky Villa. You know, what is right. next? You know, do they do they fly me in a private jet next time? It's not a healthy way to be. I completely understand that. And I wouldn't encourage anybody else to do that sort of thing. Uh, so that's my full disclaimer on it. But, you know, my thought is, Josh, as long as I'm within my gambling budget for the year, this year's <laughs> been going pretty well, especially recently. Why not push it and just see what happens? And the worst thing can be that, you know, if I have a bad loss, then I'm not going to go for the remainder of the year and so be it. And this podcast gets a hell of a lot more boring. <laughs> Absolutely. But no, Mike, circling back to your, you know, to your original question, I think what you've heard us say is there's pluses and minuses. I would say try the host out. If you have a host that's willing to, or, you, you know, you have a property that's willing to host you, I would say, what can you do for me? You know, what can you do that's beyond my corporate offer? I mean, I wouldn't say it that directly, but, you know, you get the idea. And, and go from there and just be careful of, you know, unless you don't care, be careful of getting sucked in. Um, but yeah. that's, the, that's the only warning. There's no real downside to it other than what we talked about. No, and you can always walk away from a host and just book it yourself if you want to. There's yep. nothing stopping Josh or I from booking at Wynn or MGM or Resorts World or any place like that. Just clicking on the website and clicking the room and hitting book. We may get a text or an email or a phone call later saying, hey, you know, why didn't you go through me? And you might right. have to at least say real quick why you did that, but it's always an option. There's nothing stopping you. Well, and that's kind of why I chose to play it as stay and play at Caesars on the last trip for the Star Trek convention is I didn't want to have to do the, I didn't want to feel that I had to do anything beyond whatever I was just comfortable with on low level gambling on that Star Trek trip. Yeah. Makes sense to me. Okay, so let's move on to the next email, Josh. We got this from Adam. Adam says, hey guys, just wanted to share an experience from a recent trip to Encore Boston Harbor. I was visiting for the day and me and a friend were playing at their $25 table. I play the don't, I know, I know, laying full odds <laughs> and would lay the four and 10 for 120 each. Session was generally up and down until I was shooting. I proceeded to hit probably four or five fours in the span of seven or so rolls. The dealer who had tapped in just prior to my roll was openly laughing at me losing and saying, you should be placing the four. Wow. First of all, you shouldn't be placing it. You should be buying it. <laughs> I mean, that's a different story. Yes. Um, af after about three times of the dealer doing this, I asked, quote, do you really think you should be doing that? And the dealer knew what I was referring to. I continued with my role and the dealer pointed their body in a way to hide their face, but the entire time had a grin. I finally sevened out and immediately cover colored up. The stick man mumbled something about customer service and my friend said the box made some comment to the dealer. I didn't hear it. And nobody spoke up or said anything to me along the lines of an apology or something resembling it. Unfortunately for the crew, I tip at the end of any session, win, lose, or draw. This was the first time in a very long time I did not tip. All because of this one dealer. My friend who knows this even mentioned it later in the day. By the way, the other dealers were great during the session. I will jokingly apologize for being a pain and playing the don't laying odds. And each <laughs> one of them said it was no problem and not to apologize. So before we get to the second part of this, Josh... I'm, that that is a horrible experience for a player to have. Yeah, like, like I, I as another player, I'm allowed to hate don't players, but at the same time, like I don't actually hate them as a person. I just hate the no. way they're playing, and I would never, <laughs> you know, go over the top towards them. But if that's my job, and I'm literally getting paid to put these bets into action, and I make you know money off this player tipping for me, I sure as hell wouldn't ridicule him. No. I mean, Adam, I'm thinking two things. As as Chris is talking about, we make fun of don't players, but you know, most of that is just fun. Don't feel bad about being a don't player. It's no, it's it's, it's, it's a fine I mean, way to play, right? Tim but, Lawson is still a decent person, just a horrible gambler. Just a barely, yeah, exactly. And and we've had a couple of people on the Facebook page to you know go off topic for just a second. Say, I'm sorry to ask a don't question. It's totally <laughs> fine. We're not. <laughs> no, we still okay. like you as a person. But no, what I was going to say, you're on the serious side, is that would 
I, I think I would have just probably gotten up and left the table if I'd had that happen from another dealer. It's about you occasionally get that from other players, and that drives me nuts too. I mean, we've talked about stories where you know to use the don't player as an example, where a don't player is yelling seven, all you know that kind of thing. And if I have that kind of, I mean, that's the reason that I like craps. And again, this is different from the, the don't side, but I like everybody to be kind of be playing the same way, so we all win or lose together. And I want the dealers to be supportive and with me. And I'll say, Josh, that's the one thing. If you ask me one thing I don't like about Aria as opposed to Win when we're comparing those two properties back and forth. Right. I have come across more don't players at Aria yeah. than, than any casino in my life. I don't <laughs> know why. Like, there's nothing special that they do for don't players that encourages them to play there. But I mean, Josh, I walked up to a table on my last trip and I got there. I was the only person at the table and I was immediately joined by like five don't players. I think I told you I had a similar situation. Maybe I have a reputation. Like they see this guy walking up. This guy (laughs) sucks. He he knows you can't shoot. They know you can't shoot. (laughs) But like, I don't understand that. And yes, they actively like, you know, they're really hoping for the seven to come and they're yelling it out and doing all that stuff. And it's not like, I think like, I have a tendency to like immediately bet against that and go like even heavier on my bets and, you know, really lean into the all tall small because I know they're on the don't. <laughs> you know, does that change anything? No, it doesn't change anything at all. But at the same time, it bothers me. I don't want you to be adversarial. That's not that's not good. But if you're quiet and you're respectful and you're just playing your way that you want to play, I'm right. fine with that. But I don't want to play a, with a table of don't players. No. And for a dealer to be doing that kind of thing is just awful. Yeah, I mean, it's one thing we have dealers that, you know, will occasionally play the even numbers and not play the five and nine. I'm thinking of like Tony at Aria, for example, that will kind yeah. of poke fun at us when a five or nine hits. <laughs> oh, yeah. They, it's it's and, not just Tony. It's, it's right. Of them. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm good with that within, within limits. If I were getting killed, you know, yeah. just slaughtered, then it might start to, you know, and we've talked about that too at one of our last trips at Win. Somebody, a dealer went just a little bit too far. And so I think it's a, a, a good dealer can can give just enough pushing to make it fun, but if you're, you know, it, it, they they have to be careful about that. Yeah, I mean, the first comment when a five or nine hits and I'm not playing, it's oh, right in the gap, you know, because there's nothing right. to bet there. Right, that's fine. When the third or fourth five or nine in a row hits and they're sitting there just kind of laughing at you, almost like, wow, you made some great choices here. <laughs> okay, th- maybe that's pushing it. You know, let's not go beyond right. that. I mean, we know. I mean, every better knows when they're not making money. That you know, there that sucks, and what's not make them feel even worse about it. Right. So let's get let's get to the second part of Adam's email and what came of all this, Josh. Uh, Adam says Encore sent a survey, and I made a point to mention this interaction. Much to my surprise, a table games manager called me up, and we discussed what happened. He had oh, already wow. looked. He had already looked at the film and kind of knew where this was going, what the where the dealer interaction was. I walked him through everything to line up with the film, and he profusely apologized and offered a few things to make it right within his control. All were at Encore Boston Harbor, and I wasn't going to ask about whether he could do anything in Vegas. Just the (laughs) fact that someone read the response, then floated the feedback up the ladder, did some investigating, and they were going to speak to the dealer in question was more than enough. I didn't expect that level of response. In fact, I expected no response at all. So to get 10 minutes to explain what happened meant a lot. I was already considered playing it when Encore in Vegas, but now the decision is even clearer to do so. Well, I think, Adam, that first of all, that response is fantastic. Um, I mean, just as you said, just to get a response on one of those surveys, I mean, how often do we all fill them out and you never hear a peep, but to get someone that was really seemed to really hear what you said and pay attention and do some investigation and listen, I mean, that speaks volumes and I'm not going to say, you know, it's because it's win and that kind of thing, even though in my head, I'm thinking it's because it's win, but, um, it just is really, I, I like to hear that. That part of the story is good for sure. Okay. Before I get my feedback here, Josh. I don't know if this is another Josh mistake, like with the microphone and everything, but the uh, <laughs> the caption that you gave me said email from Adam, and I get to the very end of his email, and it says thanks, Bill. <laughs> so uh, I, I don't know I don't too think, many bills I think, that uh, abbreviated <laughs> down to Adam. That wouldn't make sense. I don't think but, this is a Josh one. I think this is a Chris paste to our show notes. So Adam uh, or Bill, whichever one you choose to go by. I think, Chris, Adam is, <laughs> Adam is is also the one that we're going to get to next. No, that's Andrew. No, there's two Adams. You have Adam twice. So, we have, okay, we- so this was all Bill. <laughs> Adam, um, you're coming up in just a minute. Bill, my my sincerest apologies. Um, if you want to leave feedback, just send an email to podcast at crabvegas.com and I'll have Josh call you back within, uh, you know, a day or two. Um, okay, so let me I'm going to... 
I'm going to edit this podcast and I'm just going to put in from Adam to everything. I'm going to splice in Adam's name to every. <laughs> <Adam>? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Why not? Um, okay, Bill. Uh, one thing I, th- I thought I'd say, at least in my experience, I find that those comment cards are read very actively. And I have had calls back from casinos probably 10 times or more. Wow. Um, just I'm just getting I've had I mean, two or three, but never like that. It's happened a lot. And here, Josh, I have one story that's at least worth telling on this show about that. So back in the day, I think everybody knows I used to be a pretty heavy blackjack player. That's pretty much all I played. I used to play at my local Caesars property a lot. They had a really nice high limit room. You saw the same dealers every day. They knew you, you knew them, everybody's friendly, you know, all that sort of stuff. Well, I played there a long time, long time. And all of a sudden, one day they closed the high limit to remodel it. And a week later, it opens back up. They still have the same number of blackjack tables and stuff. But all of a sudden now, the blackjack tables in the high limit room have side bets on them. They had the 21 plus three side bet, which if you're familiar with blackjack, it's one of the most common, you know, your two cards plus the dealer's up card makes a three card hand. Right. You know, so it used to pay nine to one on all of them. Now there's, you know, gradient ones where some pay five and, you know, nine and 30, depending on what it is, straight flush, whatever. Anyways, that doesn't matter. They put it in high limit. And I was sitting there playing a week later or so after these things went in and the floor happened to walk by and I was making a comment about how this looks really bad in a high limit room. I'm a firm believer that high limit blackjack, there should not be side bets on the table because the people that are playing high limit blackjack shouldn't be playing side bets in general when it comes to this sort of thing. (laughs) You snob. If you're a high limit blackjack player, you're playing blackjack to get the best rules and the best conditions. You're not going to throw it on a 10% house edge side bet. And I fully recognize that we play the all tall small and stuff, but I'm not seeking a great mathematical game to play craps. And especially the way we play, we're definitely not chasing that. We understand there we're, in, we're increasing our variance very heavily the way that we play. But anyways, then none of that matters. I just said it didn't look very good. And a lot of other players at the table started chiming in the same thing. And everybody was kind of voicing their comments. Well, at one point, the dealer at the table, who I wasn't that familiar with and didn't really care for too terribly much, she made a comment that really pissed me off. She said, well, the side bet, that money goes to the dealers, so you should play it. That's for us. And I quickly stopped, and there was a couple people at the table playing with me, and I said, there is no way that is true. A, there's no way to segregate that money. And there's no side bet in America that that money just goes to the dealers. She wasn't saying it was like an envy bonus if you hit it or anything. She was saying somehow that betting on that bet was for the dealers. And I said, I understand you want us to all stop complaining about this, but don't (laughs) tell people that don't understand that that's the case because then they're going to start playing that bet as a tip for you. And that's not good for you. It's not good for the player. It's not good for anybody. And I don't like people lying when it comes to this. Right. Well, the floor was gone when this interaction took place. That dealer got tapped out. I left before she came back. I got my comment card from Caesars and I explained what this dealer was saying to players and just voiced my discontent with her, you know, erroneously telling players this money was going to dealers, which is insane. I got a call back, I don't know, three hours after I sent this comment card in from their head table games manager um, asking to me to explain further kind of what happened and confirm who it was and all this stuff. Right, right. It's not my job to protect these people, Josh. If you do something that dumb, I'm a firm <laughs> believer that, you know, you're going to get smacked for doing it. So I explained and told him who it was and, you know, why I was, you know, upset about this happening. And he said, okay, thank you. You know, I apologize for that. You know, that's obviously incorrect. We'll talk to the dealer. I went in about two or three weeks later and all of a sudden, like every dealer I knew started walking by my table and asking, hey, did you hear what happened? And I was like, what are you talking about? Because I'd forgot about it at this point. I, you know, out of sight, out of mind. It wasn't a big deal to me. I was just sharing the story. Well, she got fired um, because of her actions on this. And everybody's like, yeah, she got fired. And, you know, she was really upset about you. And I said, well, how does she know it was me? He he said, well, I I think you're the only person that made a big deal about it. Um, And so what you did, Chris, she knew it was me. And she ended up losing her job as a result of it. But you know what? I'm perfectly fine with that. You can't lie to players about where money is going or what yes. the purpose of it is. If you didn't want people to keep complaining about this thing on, because that's all it was, we were just jokingly bitching back and forth to say, hey, guys, come on, let's drop it, move on. And we all would have. I mean, we're all nice, reasonable people. But, you know, right. when you do that sort of thing, it's going to bite you. But anyways, the whole point of this, this lovely story from <laughs> however many years ago was, yeah, these comment cards do get read. 
And if I ever actually have a serious gripe with a casino, I don't like shoot them an email or anything. I include it on the comment because I've almost every time I've had a serious issue that really does merit a response, I get a response. I always fill them out. I think most of the time that I've had issues, it's been something minor with a room or things like that. I remember getting a couple calls back, but not, you know, not anything meaningful, not anything like, like, is it Adam or Bill? I forgot whose question we're on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is Bill's question. <laughs> this is still Bill. Uh, yeah, still no, nothing like that happened with Bill or that happened with you. But I'm glad to know that those comment cards, at least at some properties, are taken seriously. I always try and fill them out. Usually for me, it's trying to really call out good craps crews. I mean, that's what I try and focus on is the dealers that I had or the really good employees to try and thank them. And hopefully they get a, you know, some sort of, you know, Rick has seven gold stars or something from all the people that have yeah. commented on him. No, that's the other thing I was going to point out. And that's something I encourage everyone to do. They always ask you, is there any special staff that, you know, you really want to point out for doing a good yep. job? That really does matter at 99% of places that send those cards out. If you leave them a positive story or feedback about a certain person's name, they can get bonuses based off that. They can get like special perks for being called out. Yes, Wynn does like stars and stuff for, you know, positive experiences and stuff. There's all sorts of things that can happen. Yeah. Exactly. It, it can be a great thing. So encourage you if you're if you're of that mind to keep track of all those employees that you really valued whatever they did for you and send that note. Yeah, I try to make a like a small note in my phone or something. If there's somebody I really think went out of their way, just to make sure I can mention them on the email when I get that later. So, yeah. And now just, we, now we mention them on the show. Yeah, for all the good, you know, <laughs> for all the bad things that can come from these things, there's a lot of good things that can come too. So definitely keep them in mind. But yeah, a Adam Bill, that was a good I'm glad that happened. Yeah, absolutely. So let's move on to an email actually from Adam, I think, or I just screwed up again. <laughs> this episode just wasted. Uh, but we have an email from Adam. Adam said, hi, guys. Love the show. I'm currently taking a cruise with Norwegian Cruise Lines, and the casinos have a few craps tables. $10 minimum, $1,000 maximum. A situation kind of scary the other day, though. The person next to me was betting a consistent $10 field bet. During one of the rolls, he accidentally grabbed a $500 purple chip in a nickel, Oops. A, which is a $5 <laughs> chip, instead of two nickels, making it a $505 Ooh. field bet. So that's under the maximum table limit. It's above the minimum. That's a legal bet. Right. It hit. The bet won. A field number was rolled. The dealer then noticed he had accidentally bet $505 on the field instead of his usual 10 and grabbed the pit boss. The pit boss initially refused to pay the $505 win and paid the man $10, suggesting, quote, his bet was a mistake bet, and he clearly intended on betting $10 just like he had the past few hours. After much arguing and holding up the game, the man fought for his win, saying the chips are on the felt and it's a fair wager. The pit boss reluctantly paid the $505 win. Josh, have you ever seen anything like this before? I've seen people play, you know, I've probably picked up the wrong chip. I'm sure I have. I have many Most times. Yeah. yeah, most of the time, the good crews will catch it ahead of time. Yes. You know, your, your really good crews will see that. If not, I've always, I don't think I've ever had a situation where they didn't make it right. Now, what is make it right in this situation is an interesting question. Yeah, because if they go the opposite direction, let's say the bet loses. Right. And you put Would five, they take five out there instead of $10. Well, if they quote unquote make it right and just take $10 from you and give it back, then you just got a free shot. Right. And that's not good either. But if they pay the whole thing and when they would have taken it, you know, not taking the whole thing. I mean, yeah, you can't do that. It's not fair to them as well. My thing is, if it's a bet on the table and it's within the limits and they don't catch it, you have got to honor the bet as is. I would fully expect to lose that bet if it lost. And I fully expect it to be paid if it wins. I would, too. I would, too, honestly. And Chris, it's interesting. And, and Adam, you know, you, you bring up the cruise ship crafts. And I was thinking about my last experience. We talked a little bit about it. But one thing I forgot to say, Chris, I don't think I told you this. I had a kind of a similar situation. So the cruise ship was capped at two times odds. But I didn't know that. I figured it was five, ten times or something. And it was a $5 table. So I think early on, I did five with like 40 or $50 odds. Mm -hmm. Not, not even, you know, cause I'm used to a, I'm used to playing at a level You're where I can play more. So it didn't, right. Like so I just put down 40 or $50 odds and, you know, didn't even think about it. Well, the bet, whatever it was lost seven came and I lost that. Nobody said a peep. And Did then later take, on they took 50, they took the 50. No, okay. you know, nobody said a peep. And then later on, I, you know, it came up what's maximum odds. And they said two times. I'm like, Oh, 
you know, and I didn't make a deal you out of it because 10 times early. <laughs> right. Yeah. You didn't have a problem taking it earlier. And that again, it was a, and in that case, it wasn't a legal wager. It wasn't what, you know, your example here is or Adam's example, but I would like them to have made it right, you know, to have paid attention to that. If they're going to not pay me on a win, then they should not take it on a loss, which is kind of the opposite of this, but same idea. Yeah. I don't care, you know, which direction they want to go. Cause some places, if you're over audited, They'll pay it as a place bet or a right. bet, whatever it is right. for anything that's over the top. That's fine. You know, and then you can take the whole thing if I lose. I'm okay with that. A lot of places are very good about double checking to make sure that you're not over on odds. Um, and there are some properties, and I know Mike and Mark have mentioned this on their show multiple times, but I saw it firsthand when I was there. I know Diamond Joe Worth, if you were heavy on the odds, they would, even if you if the bet lost, they would break it down and make sure it's right. the correct odds on the bet. They would return what was over, and at the same time, if it won, they'd break it down and just pay you on yep. what you should have had out there. And that's, I actually prefer that method. Because Me too. I think that makes a lot more sense, and there's less room for error there. So let's stick with that. But to finish his email, he said, Personally, I found it scary how the pit boss did not want to pay what seemed like a fair wager. Mistake or not, the chips were placed in the field and the dice were moved by the crew. If it were the other way around, I, we all know the house would have loved a quick $505 grab. Props to the man for standing up for his win. What do you guys think? So I think we've we've given you our feedback on this. Really bad situation. Mistakes happen. Josh, I've done this many a times before where I meant to put out, you know, and I've gone both ways. Oh, yeah. I meant to put out, you know, $100 in odds and I've put out $5 in odds or I meant to put $100 and I put $500 somehow. Yeah, just stupid stuff. But a good crew should immediately recognize that there's an error and get it corrected well before the dice are sent. Or even if the dice have been sent to say, oh, hey, you know, just max odds, max odds, no action right. arrest or something. Just so everybody and, knows that you weren't really trying to play that. And, you know, a really, really good property might. Now, this is a pretty extreme example, but sometimes you'll have situations where a property will pay to the player's advantage and they wouldn't have taken, you know, they wouldn't have taken the whole 505 in that situation, but they will pay it. You will find that sometimes they'll choose to they'll choose to help, especially if it's a regular player or things like that, you know, that you can see. Every once in a while, they'll make that in the player's favor. Yeah, you'll see that more in, I think, higher-end properties that have uh, True, know, yeah. more realistic expectations on that money coming back pretty quickly. The places <laughs> that sweat the action, that probably... The cruise ship, I would have loved that quick 505 bucks and ran, yeah. Oh, yeah, that would have been awesome. You'll never see him again, don't care. Right. So, uh, okay, so thank you for that, Adam. We appreciate it. We received another email from Adam. No, it's, 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 it's Andrew this time, I think. I checked the beginning. Adam, Adam yeah, Bauer is going to get a big ego over all this. <laughs> he is. None of these are Adam Bauer, as far as I know, and I don't want to give him any props on this show. Uh, but anyways, email from Andrew. Hello, I just found your podcast, and you have been the only thing I listened to for the last couple of weeks. Thought Aww. I'd let you know about... Yeah, I know. Very sweet. <laughs> uh, thought I'd let you know about my trip. I booked a comped one-bedroom Mountain View Sky Suite midweek, so he must be at Aria, Josh, because that's the only time I have a Sky Suite available to me and my offers. Understand that? That's typically when I have them available in my offers, too. I've only ever stayed in Mountain View Sky Suite, so I was hoping to upgrade to a strip view at check-in for a minimal price. Well, much to my delight, I found out I was upgraded to a penthouse one-bedroom panoramic Sky Suite. You know what those are? All the way up on the 51st floor. (laughs) <laughs> and he says, clearly they like my action more than Chris's, who are they are restricting to the <laughs> 27th right. floor. Yes, that is uh, very annoying. But notice his penthouse with Sky Suite is not on the top level, though, Josh, but so be it. It's I, close. It's closer yeah, than it's, yours. It's a whole lot closer than mine. <laughs> uh, I enjoyed watching the action at the airport and the sphere at night. I'm only a $25 low limit craps player. So I asked why I was upgraded and they said it was due to my gold status. So that was a nice perk. Very nice. Our last evening around 11 p.m., I told my partner I would try craps one last time. I had to catch a hot shooter. Ended up at a $25 crapless table. Buy in after the shooter made his point. And then, of course, the next one is .7 out. Dice gets passed to me. I had a point of four. Put odds behind the dealer bet, but not mine. And they all gave me a hard time for that. But I was shooting well and finally put $75 in odds down, followed by me making the point. That was a nice little start. But, of course, my point of six was quickly followed by a seven. More shooters and more bad luck. Another quick losing crap session. My girlfriend doesn't get upset watching me gamble, but when we left that table, she said she wanted to boo everyone when they had a shitty roll, which led her to ask (laughs) if anyone's ever booed people at the craps table. So I figured I'd ask you guys, have you ever been at a table where everyone seems to get upset with a certain shooter or boo them? (laughs) Thanks, Andrew. Josh, have you ever booed somebody at a craps table before? (laughs) 
Well, first of all, Andrew, th- thanks for the email. And I'm glad you're enjoying Sky Suites. And that's mm-hmm. kind of how we, you know, we oftentimes our offers are midweek Sky Suites. And then our host is nice enough to sometimes give them give them to us on the weekend or the penthouse panoramics or all that stuff. So, yeah, screw similar. you taking those higher floor ones that I can't get. <laughs> you're right. the person that's taking it away from me. But as for booing, I, the only times I can remember ever booing are mostly in jest. And it would be like me booing yeah. Chris or him booing me. Yeah. Or things like I, that. I've done it facetiously before. Yeah. Many times. You know, I'll even do it, Josh, after like a, you know, amazing shooter with 35 or 40 rolls and they throw a seven, I'll start booing jokingly. Right. Well, yeah, you that's know? a fun one to I mean, do right so after a great fun. roll. Right. Uh, but at the same time, no, I don't think even a don't player, I wouldn't boo them. I'd leave no. the table and come right, up. Right. But I, I wouldn't boo somebody. That's not really my now, personality. In my head, sometimes if I have somebody that's had two or three bad rolls, you know, that they roll and it sucks, they're point seven, and then dice go around and they do it again. And I'm aware that it's the same person. In my head, I'm thinking, this person can't throw dice, you know, then why are they not passing? <laughs> <He's> <laughs> Even though I know they're in the wrong set. Why is he doing this? <laughs> right. <laughs> that lady can't throw him halfway across the table or that guy's throwing him off or whatever. Uh, but I've never, ever, I'm always really careful never to do that publicly. Th- that's just not any really fun. You know, no, if you're, if you're booing. So yeah. I mean, it, it, again, we, we want to win or lose together most of the time on craps and Chances are if somebody else sucked, you're losing too, and you're going to suck just as bad and blah, blah. And, you know, Josh, I don't know if I should or not, but I feel like a lot of the people, especially because we tend to play higher limit tables, you know, $50 table, $100 table would be it. I have a tendency to think that, you know, these people may come across like in a professional setting at some point in my life, or at least I like to, <laughs> or I like to treat it that way. Right. And it, it has happened before where I've, I've got business out of state oh, yeah. craps table you know, talking to somebody that's in this, you know, he was looking for some work in a field that my company works in. I was able to get a business card and turn it into something. So I don't want to like burn any bridges with any of these people because half the time you don't know who you're playing with. These people could be very important in your life at a later time. If you just had to play, you know, if you had played it correctly or whatever. And, and the higher the level of the table you play at, typically you're coming across some people that are pretty serious in the world, you know, whether it's, you know, like coaches for professional teams or something like that, that I would never right. interact with. But, you know, maybe my company might get a shot at putting in some interiors in their businesses and stuff. And, you know, if I just had been nicer to them, you know, I could have got that gig. I don't know. Yeah. But no, I think, you know, I, I at least have had a desire to boo people. So I understand your girlfriend's, uh, you know, <laughs> wanting yeah. to do it, but I've never actually done it. No, same thing. Okay. So let's get to the last question. We got an email from Marty. He said, hi, Chris and Josh. Love the podcast. Terrific work. I listened to Josh talking about the rundown conditions of some of the Rio rooms in the latest podcast. Also read about the Nevada State Senate passing a bill that would allow casinos not to clean the rooms every day. And now have heard of bed. Rio doesn't have that problem. (laughs) (laughs) That is very true. (laughs) And now have heard of bed bugs in numerous casinos in Vegas. Both MGM and Caesars, along with the Palazzo, have been reported of having some of those issues. My question is, would this alter how you plan where to stay or alter any other behaviors for your future stays? Thanks again to both of you for your excellent podcast. Always look forward to the episodes coming out. Cheers, Marty. Well, thanks, Marty. And you are right about Rio and they are run down. <laughs> Although, Chris, properties are run down. <laughs> <laughs> changing the subject for just a sec. Did you see the new photographs of the, some of the Rio rooms that have been done? They yeah, don't they look, look half bad. As, yeah, they look just as oh, bad. Oh, they, they don't, don't look, look more. Ha- well, maybe boring, but they don't look half bad. At least they're, no, you know, no, I mean, no, I'm, I'm used to what. I'm very excited about that, but okay. <laughs> but any, anyway, back to back to bed bugs. I've read those same stories and it does concern me a little bit. I mean, especially having just stayed at Caesars and just spent time at Rio and things like that. More that's, you know, that's been on my mind. Caesars had Legionnaire's disease, I think, recently. Yeah. No, I saw that. <laughs> that was really exciting. <laughs> So I'm, and of course I got sick right after the Star Trek mentions. I'm like, did I catch that? But anyway, it led me to think, Chris, about you know, there are various vloggers and YouTubers and things like that will, that will just for just for views and clicks and everything stay at the worst rated property in Vegas or you know that kind of thing. And I'm like, would I do that? You know, sometimes I think it'd be fun because I think you guys would like knowing, you know, maybe hearing what we said if we stayed at Circus Circus or something like that. And I think. I don't know. The bed bugs is an issue or, you know, whatever is an issue. So, yeah, it's on my mind. I, I'd like to think that, you know, Sky Squeets isn't going to have them and Wynn's not going to have them and things like that. What do you think, Chris? Yeah, I mean, it sure feels like the lower the level property, the more likely you are to have something like that happen. 
and it's not specific to Vegas for me. I, I have a tendency to check like bed bug registries and stuff like that. If I'm taking my family on a vacation somewhere, right? Some places that we've wanted to go before were historically known for having those issues. And we've just completely skipped those places just because of that. But no, I'm, yes, I mean, if there is something that's that large, like bed bugs, and it's all over the news, and they're like, Wynn now has bed bugs, and it was in 40 rooms, then no, I'm not going to win if that's the case right <laughs> then. I will stay somewhere else. So no, it, I mean, it absolutely affects what I choose. I care about the quality of the room. I think it's important. And one of the reasons I stopped going to Cromwell towards the end is that Caesars just let the place fall apart. The rooms were dilapidated. Right. There's holes in furniture and things falling off and things weren't working. So I just didn't want to go there anymore because I don't want to stay at a place that isn't up, you know, upkept at all. And Caesars is historical for doing that sort of thing. I mean, this is just who they are. They upgrade a property and they let it fall into disarray. They wait 15 years and then they'll upgrade another part of the property. That's just what they yeah. do. Now, I understand the reality of life as a, you know, as a hotel, as a, you know, especially a resort in Las Vegas, where you've got people coming and going from all over the world that people are going to bring stuff in. But your good property, or well, I shouldn't say your good properties, but your well-managed properties are going to be cleaning very often, you know, to get rid of it's those things, whatever they are. One that, room to a hundred right. rooms. It's right. specific to that room. They eradicate the problem and we move right. on. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I don't, I don't blame the property for the introduction of bed bugs or whatever it is, but I do blame the property for not finding it and isolating and eradicating whatever it is. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so we were able to empty out some of the emails we've received recently, Josh. So that was really exciting. That was we all from Adam. Very. I mean, we really don't do that often. So, yeah. Did some of those emails come from? from you notice, folks, we never say what date the emails came in. <laughs> no, I try to stay <laughs> we, away from that. <laughs> we got this email in August of 2022. It does happen, um, but I think on this one, Josh, I, I actually went backwards. I actually chose some of the most recent ones. <laughs> So, uh, well, you know, uh, you know the, the rundown Rio one could have been an email from a couple of years ago, too, just as easily. I mean, as an accountant, you know, it's it's LIFO, you know, last in, first out. That's how that's we right. respond to things right now. Yeah. So that's what we're doing. I was I was as you're saying that I'm like, isn't it FIFO? And then I'm that's first because it's because in, first out, Josh. in I mean, that, shipping that's how we should and in dis- respond to them in shipping and distribution. It's FIFO. <laughs> well, there you go. OK, so let's uh, mention Patreon, patreon.com slash crap Vegas. Uh, One thing before we do the normal spiel, I keep forgetting to say this, so I'm going to say it right now so I don't forget. We are running an an NFL survival pool for our patrons on there. It's all set up. You can get registered. Um, All patrons get a free entry. Um, If you're a KCS, you actually get two free entries. There's some really good prizes, you know, Amazon gift cards and merch and all sorts of stuff like that. We're even running a potential program to double the prize pool, depending on how many entrants there are. We'd love to have you over there. If you're hearing this when it first comes out on Sunday, that means we are one week before the first week of NFL season, and you can register all the way up until next Sunday at, I think, 1 o'clock. So if you want to register for Patreon in the next week, you can get in on that contest for free, win a prize. We'd love to have you over there. I know nothing about NFL football. I'm a college guy. I'm going to get killed, but Josh and I will you know, we'll participate. We just won't last very long. So we'd love to have you over there, so get registered for it. Absolutely. We definitely would. And I'm looking forward to winning the whole thing and Chris sending me my Amazon gift card. <laughs> That's not happening. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, recent episode on there, Josh, we talked about Win Paradise Park. Yeah, we took a step back in Vegas history. I thought it'd be fun to, to look at that crazy project that was supposed to be Win Paradise Park and what a trip that would have been to have, have that on the strip. But we talked about that on the last Patreon episode. So thanks again to our patrons for their support. And even if you don't want to listen, you can always still be a patron and just support the show. Yeah, no, that's awesome too. Josh, I really enjoyed that Patreon recording because I I wasn't super familiar with Win Paradise Park. So I learned a lot trying to get ready for it and having that discussion with you. And every day since we've recorded that, I've been thinking about it more and more. And I'm thinking, why is that not a thing in Vegas right now? I don't <laughs> care about Win's golf course. Give me Paradise Park. Uh, that would have been fun for sure. And then, of course, as soon as we put it out, we got fact-checked by like 40 people. That's, like, I know. That's what I was going to say at next. One, yeah. <laughs> at one point in the episode, I said, when was the most expensive golf course? I, I said that as a non-golfer because on the page that I was reading, it said when was the most expensive <laughs> golf course. I assumed that was correct. I didn't know. Um, and as Chris is saying that, that, I'm thinking, not. yeah, I was going to say, as, as you were saying that, Chris, I'm thinking, I don't think that's right, but I trust Chris. I'm going with that. Chris is right (laughs) 70% of the time. (laughs) 
Anyways, no. So it was a really fun episode talking about it. I wish that was in Vegas now. Maybe that would bring some more life to the north end of the strip than what exists right now. But a big thank you to the new uh, patrons that we've had in the past week. That is Tyler G, Andrew C, Ronnie B, Scott P, Eric M, and Bill R. Thank you again to all of you guys that have signed up over the past week. We really do appreciate it. And I wonder if this is Bill R slash Adam. Oh, yeah. I didn't even think about that, Josh. Yeah, it's a Bill slash Adam. I mean, they're pretty much right. the same person. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you all very much, as I said. Yep. Upcoming trips. Uh, of course, we have a trip coming up middle of September, the September 15th weekend. We're going out for my birthday. Josh and I will be there. We're spending uh, three nights. Josh will be there probably seven nights, but we're spending three <laughs> nights at Aria together. It'll be a lot of fun. We've added a show since the last time we had an episode. We're going to we're gonna do it. What are we going to perform, Chris? Yes, we're doing a comedy show. Downtown. We've added a show. <laughs> It'll be really fun. <laughs> yes. The first one was sold out, so we've added a second show. Uh, no, we're, we're going to see O on Friday night. We always had that planned, but Josh and I were talking. We thought, hey, since I'm going to be there an extra night now, let's add another show. Are you going to so tell I, people what it is? We're going to see Fantasy at the Luxor. <laughs> oh, la, la. Josh loves his burlesque shows. We'll see if it's Oh, better. sure. We'll see if it's better or worse than, uh, what do we see? Rouge? Is that what we Rouge. saw? Rouge. Rouge. Yeah, at the Strat, Strat right. We almost died that night. Um, so we're going to go see Fantasy at Luxor. Maybe we'll play some craps down there. So we'll have a lot of things to talk about. That's coming up. And also, Josh, you haven't mentioned uh, your trip to Zorkfest coming up soon recently. Yeah, as uh, we mentioned before, I will be at Zorkfest and doing some coffee dice. Well, doing lots of dice. And would love to have you join me at, in Lake Tahoe. It's Friday, October 13th, Friday the 13th to Sunday, October 15th in Tahoe. I think it's at Harrah's. It's either Harrah's or Harvey's. I think it's at Harrah's. It's the only two companies uh, they got. So yeah, right. be. <laughs> it's at one it's or the a, other. It's at John's house in his basement. <laughs> uh, we'll send you the address after you sign up. But anyway, we'd love to have you. It's a really interesting co conference. It's travel. It's miles. It's gambling. It's all sorts of that kind of thing. And main thing is it'll just be fun. Lots of great content if you're into that and then fun recreational stuff. There's cocktail parties. There's, you know, gambling. Mark and Dr. Mike from You Can Bet on That will be there, too. So if I'm not enough of a draw, they'll be there. Michael Traeger will be there. I think some other surprise guests will be there. Oh, One notable. See, this works out, Josh, because you didn't show up to our, you know, gambling right. meetup in Iowa uh, when I met with Mark and Mike there. And uh, this time I'm not going to make it. And you get to be there. So th it all balances out in the long run. Absolutely. And one of us is usually enough. Two of us is overkill anyway. Yeah. You, I mean, we're pretty much the same person. We look the same. We act the same. We play the same way. If you get one of us, you get us both. <laughs> Back to the September trip for just a sec. As Chris said, we'll be there soon for his birthday. And we've had lots of people reaching out and wanting to know, you know, where we'll be and when we'll be. It's the usual thing. We'll be staying at Aria and we'll be always playing coffee dice. So that's the best regular time to see us or play with us. There'll be other times, of course, too, but those will be the you can, you, can almost, you can almost set your watch by it. You know, people keep asking me what time we'll be down there, Josh, on Saturday and Sunday for Coffee Dice. I always have to tell them the same thing. Look, if it's just me by myself, I'll be <laughs> You're there, there at 4 a.m. 4 to 5, <laughs> somewhere in that range. That's usually where it is. If right. Josh and I are together, we typically did something the night before, a show or something, so we were up later. We typically start around 6 to 7, somewhere in that range is what we shoot for. Yeah. Um, so... Just look for the two guys that look very similar down there. Just listen for our voices and you'll find us pretty quick. Yep. But it'll probably be six just because Starbucks opens at six. So that's kind of my. That, you know. that is true. We do try to grab a coffee before we walk to the table. And I saw this actually pop up on Twitter earlier today. A big discussion about do you get your coffee? At the <laughs> that, table? This was Tim, I think, from The Better yeah, Life. Tim Lawson, I think, uh, from The Better Life had that out that today. We try to get our coffee before we get to the table. I'm more of an espresso sort of person. And that's not something I want to grab at a table from a cocktail waitress. I'd rather grab my coffee as I like it before we get there. Yep. And I'm a ice tall caramel macchiato person. So that's especially hard to get at a table. <laughs> yeah. Good luck with that asking. And then as table. Chris knows, I get my diet Coke and orange juice at the table. Separate. Yeah. Separate. Not together. You always <laughs> got to specify that. Okay. Quick reminder for everyone to please subscribe, like, and review our podcast on your favorite podcasting app and visit our merch store. That's crapvegas.com slash shop. We are still running that promotion to celebrate my birthday, 20% off of all purchases using promo code BROTHERS. And Josh, that has unfortunately kept me very busy the past week and a half or two weeks, whatever it's been, fulfilling those orders. I forgot what a pain that is to have to pull them, put them in the bag, <laughs> print a label, ship them out to people. And because the people Poor get guy. mad at you if you don't ship it quick enough, it's and true. I don't want to disappoint anybody. 
Yeah, thanks for your support, everybody, on the swag, on the merch. That's all That's all fun. It's As we always say, it's nice to see that stuff out in the wild. Hopefully, we'll see some of that at ZorkFest because we'll be doing some coffee dice. Yeah, absolutely. Anything else you want to talk about before we get out of here today? Last thing I was going to say, we got a few responses from folks on our Vegas travel horror stories. Oh, yeah. Uh, and we're trying to put together episode. my call out. Yeah, and we want to hopefully get a couple more so we can kind of turn that into a fun discussion for the next show. Or the show after that, if we're still trying to get people to leave some <laughs> to leave some feedback on that. But well, I think take, uh, the, take the time to actually check the emails. Again well, there is that. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, uh, love to. If you have some Vegas Vegas travel horror stories, give us a shout. We'd love to hear them. Yeah, awesome. that's it for me. Okay, easy enough. Thank you guys all for listening. We do appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon. Bye bye. Vegas, here we come. Thanks for listening to the Crap Vegas Podcast. Have you ever been to Vegas? Check out all our recent news and our Vegas trip calendar by visiting crapvegas.com. See you in Vegas. You put your arms up in an X. What does that mean? That means I couldn't hear you. Show over. (laughs) I'm out of here. (laughs)